Hello, and welcome to section one, Brainstorm Your Narrative. And in order for us to create a narrative for your character, uh, the first thing to do is, ironically, to give yourself a couple of boundaries. And the reason we give ourselves boundaries is to help us become more creative and work within certain restrictions and problem solve. So I like to think about it like this. Uh, it's me scrolling through my favorite streaming platform, using the amount of time I was supposed to be watching something, trying to find something to watch, because there's just too many choices. So in order for us to avoid that problem in our own creative process, we need to give ourselves boundaries. And the first one that I like to give myself is culture. And it can be any culture. Even if your character comes from a completely made-up culture, you can still draw inspiration from cultures that actually do exist. So, with that being said, I tend to do a lot of Chinese designs, so I'm going to pick Chinese. The second one I like to pick is a time period. And again, this can be anything. It can be far into the future, like Halo. It can be in the near future, like Cyberpunk. Or it can be way in the past, like ancient Rome or Egypt. It can also be a made-up time period. But even then, again, you'll draw from real-life sources. So pick something. I'm going to pick Circa Qin Dynasty. And the Qin Dynasty was the first dynasty of a unified China. I just really like the aesthetics of that time period. The way the artifacts looked and the way that the clothing looked. You can pick whatever you like. And within those two boundaries that we just picked, we're going to look for some more inspiration. I tend to watch a lot of documentaries about history, culture, nature, science, basically anything. So for me, I listed a couple of things that fascinate me, and that's myths and legends, urban legends, maybe historical figures, cryptids, again, anything. The key thing to remember, though, for a dark fantasy and horror character, which is the namesake of this course, um, is to create dichotomy. And that is to take two opposite things and combine them into one. For example, to take something safe and make it unsafe. Like an adorable cat with a tail that's made of nails or has spikes growing out of it. Or to take something comforting and make it uncomfortable. Like taking your childhood favorite blanket or teddy bear and turning it into a creature that wants to devour you. That kind of thing. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples of pieces that I did with dichotomy in mind. And the first one is the voices in my head. Um, and this one features some dolls, puppets, or even, I guess, action figures that we used to play with. And I made them feel unsafe because they move by themselves and they don't have eyes. Because eyes are windows into the soul, right? Uh, and without eyes, it implies that they don't have souls. And the second one is a historically gentle and caring figure, such as a nurse or a nun, combined with chains, which are generally used to restrain or restrict or restrain prisoners and mental health patients back in the day. So uh, again, taking two things that are opposite, but combining them into one. And finally, this last one is a bit of an older piece that I did, but I took a pretty lady or a beautiful woman and combined it with some petrified corpses and a big demon thing in the back. So uh, again, dichotomy, right? Keep that in mind because we are creating a dark fantasy or horror character. If that's not the intention of your character, then I guess you don't have to think about this. But um, I think it's fun and I think it's great to be able to build something into your character that inherently makes them unsettling. Okay, next we're going to move on to the idea and mood board. 
And these pictures don't even have to be your references. They're just things that spark your imagination and give you ideas. And the things I picked are very historical because I'm a history nerd and I really like delving into these things. Uh, the first one is an actual location in China. It's called Heaven's Gate, and it's basically this giant portal in a huge rock face. It really does look like gates to heaven when you're there. I haven't been there. It's on my bucket list. Uh, next one is the night sky. And uh, I like space. It is the Milky Way, and I like the colors there. So we'll probably be using those colors. The next one over, I'm not actually sure what that is, but I like the designs on it again. It's very swirly, and I like the shapes. The next one over is a painting or a portrait of one of the emperors from that time period. And I like how imposing and heavy the, the hanfu looks, or the robes look. And last one on the right is the terracotta army. Down at the bottom there, there's two more artifacts, one a bracelet and the other one some kind of figurine, and I just like the shapes of those. The next one over is a turtle shell. It is the belly part of a turtle, and there's ancient Chinese writing on it. They used to do divination with these things, and so technically this, I guess, is a form of looking into your future. The next one over from that is a bronze sculpture from the Shang Dynasty, which actually predates the Qin Dynasty. They had a very, very unique look to everything that they made. Sorry, this is not a history uh, lesson, so I'm going to just leave it at that, and you can take a look by yourself if you're interested. The next one over is what an ancient cup used to look like. And finally, the last one on the right is a star chart. And it was used, again, for divination and telling the future and also telling the seasons and so forth. So from that, I have compiled my ideas and I'm going to take inspiration from an actual goddess in Chinese mythology, Xi Wang Mu. Although I'm not going to design her, I'm going to design a goddess that's heavily based on her. Uh, Xi Wang Mu was actually the original goddess of plagues and disasters. But later in Journey to the West, or Xioji, she gave the monkey king, or Sun Wukong, the fruit that would grant eternal life. So, I'm going to create the goddess of plagues, disasters, and eternal life. All right, so here we get into the character description. And we're going to answer the five W's as well as a how. Now, the next one is what. What is she? She is an elegant woman dressed in a stylized Qin Dynasty hanfu with the colors of the midnight sky and galaxies as eyes. Where? Well, she exists in an ambiguous space within the cosmos. And when? She comes from an age from before Buddhism and Taoism in China. So, uh, during the Qin Dynasty, neither of those religions existed yet. So um, everything was based on very, very archaic folklore. And that's actually a very fascinating topic as well, but I'm not going to cover it here. So I'm thinking lots of archaic folklore and cosmic magic. And why does she exist? She exists as a manifestation of polarity. And even the other entities in heaven must show her respect. And how did she come to be? She was birthed from the contradictions within the universe and the good and the bad that exists in every circumstance. I know, very philosophical, right? <laughs> but again, I like dichotomy. I like bringing dichotomy into my designs, and it works very well with dark fantasy and, and horror. So try and bring that element into your own designs. And the assignment for this section is to create your own character description based on the steps that I just outlined. And if you don't want to do that, you can just use mine and follow along. All right, I'll see you in the next part.